We say things that don't mean anything, but thanks for listening. Yeah. Welcome everybody to We Say Things, episode 53. Suns fan here with Cinder in. How are you doing today? <laughs> you sounded like one of those edits where, you know, it's like, what's that, what's that editing called where you like, it's an editing style where it's called jump cuts. You sounded like you jump cut that. I like it. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you so good much, job. Cinder. In. I'm good. I'm good, Shannon. I'm good. I didn't, did I ask you? How, how, how? Didn't you say how I am? Eh, probably. I'm good. You know, it's the American greeting, you know? They, it's just, know. you just throw that oh, shit out Nobody there. We don't actually fuck, care. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Does that trigger you when you're in the U.S.? Not, to, not counting waitresses. Let's say you're just walking down the street or you're at like a, let's say a supermarket or something mm. to that effect. And they greet you. They say hello. They say, how are you doing? Does that bother you? No, but it's, it doesn't bother me, but it also just seems unnecessary. I don't know. Maybe that's a very negative way of looking at it, but no. The negative way is uh, I won't mention the, who they are. Not that it really matters. But when we had DC, a lot of them were from outside the U.S. and they really hated the fake hellos and stuff. I wouldn't say mm. it's a hundred percent fake. I mean, you're just trying to be nice. You're not. I mean, it's not like you want them to die or anything. In like Denmark, that. when you go shopping, the cashier will say, "You just say hello," and they say hello back, and that's it. But no, hey, how are you? Oh, isn't it nice weather? You know? It is nice weather, though. You have to... It actually is. I'm going to walk the fuck out of my dog later. Woo! Wow, that, that sounds sexual. Okay, so let's uh, no, get our not. Patreon shout-outs here. Cinderin, yep. I can't remember... I did all of them last time. Oh. I would do it again, but I no. think uh, I think you really want to do it because there's a new guy on there or a renamed guy. I'll do it. Uh, we have Mr. Thank you again to everyone that we're going to talk about. Mr. Underscore Man, Ben Broomhead, Ben Jackson, Chosnek Pizda, DG, Dop, Dyslexic Lawyer, Fane, Former Counter-Strike Pro. <laughs> it's not me, by the way. It's another person. Sure. That was professional. <laughs> we're money laundering on Patreon. <laughs> Fred the Pleb, not Fred Fred. Freshly seasoned goat balls. Thank you for renaming yourself again. Uh, we had a one week hiatus with only freshly seasoned. Uh, Gavrissimo, GG Gamer 74, Hoey 988, period. As a period at the end, we have to make sure we say that every time. Anonymous, mm. Leonardo Alvarez, Novi Panda, my boy, Poop Feast 420, Pitch Black, Ronnie Keel, Sinbi the Dinby. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Tip, The Coward, Fellowship of the Ping, and Wooden Aftertaste. Thank you guys for being part of the In Bruges uh, tier. Patreon tier. Uh, Senator, before we begin the episode officially, I do want to say that I finished The Last Dance. We talked about this briefly, I believe, oh, yeah. during the first two episodes. For those that don't know, this is the Michael Jordan slash 98 Chicago Bulls documentary. Might be the best documentary I've ever seen. And that's coming from somebody... I know I'm a big NBA fan. I think a lot of people that are into sports in general will find this appealing to see like the attitude of somebody that is Michael Jordan, a.k.a. the greatest player of all time by most standards. Um, you know, some of the difficulties he went through during his career. Uh, but this is coming from somebody that absolutely despised the, the Bulls in the 90s because they always beat the Suns. Uh, and I'm I'm a kind of guy. I don't know how you are, Cinder. And I I root for the underdog. They were never the underdog. Um, maybe early on, but that's about it. Imagine hating people because they're better than you, instead of hating them because they're you know bad people. Well, to be Sorry. fair, Just towards to the later stages of that run for the Bulls, they had somebody named Dennis Rodman. Have you heard of him before? I have. Do you, can you picture what he looks like? Uh, all I can picture is like a stick. What's, what do you call that? A stick figure? Yeah, he, he's like he's called Rodman. So all I can <laughs> see it in front of my eyes is a guy made out of rods. You Are know? you sure like that's a, uh, a stick figure? That's the reason, and not that one topic we brought up where you can't picture stuff in your head. Is that really the issue? I mean, picturing what a person looks like that you've never seen and have no descriptions of is actually pretty hard because they could look any way I wanted them to. 
It was more so a question, have you ever seen what he looks like, which obviously the answer to is no. Although, no. I, I think if you Google it and you look at him, you'll probably okay. recognize him. Uh, very okay. colorful hair Googling a lot him. of the time. Uh, dressed up very flamboyantly. Uh, a big character, as it were. Wow. His hair has every color in the world. Yes. Um, but he was kind of this guy He'd that was... He'd be a perfect YouTuber five years ago. <laughs> The oh. documentary, though, Cinder, was fascinating on so many levels. I'm not going to, I mean, it's, nothing's really spoiler since this happened 20 years ago, but an amazing watch. I believe it's available on Netflix, people were saying. I watched it on TV. Uh, but just seeing the mentality of somebody that, like, he come, Michael Jordan comes off as a huge dick. A lot of, like, he bullies people on his team. Well, he was on the Chicago Bullies. Yes, that is true. Yes. But some of the side stories, like Rodman just taking a break in the middle of the year to go to vegas he's like can i get two days off to go to vegas and they're like okay they let him go for two days and he ends up going for like two weeks they couldn't find him they had to go search for him in the middle of the fucking season because he's partying all the time and banging apparently carmen electra on every single in every single room of the bulls practice facility <laughs> uh that part was not in the documentary that was some tweets later on but regardless oh, damn i wonder why I, they couldn't release those tapes highly recommend if there's even a one percent interest i promise you you will enjoy it on some level i found it quite fascinating mm -hmm. uh, so yeah that is the last dance uh it's 10 episodes and i'm actually extremely sad that it's done i was looking forward to it every single week okay so first news of the week cinderin is a giant one newbie has been banned for match fixing this includes the likes of, let me look at the roster again, Moogie. Moogie, AQ, Wizard, YG, and Faith. Faith. Ooh. Especially Faith and Moogie are names people will recognize because Faith won TI2 and Moogie was, what was his nickname at TI7 when they got second? I think it was Moogie, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. Are you sure? Why can't I remember this? Wow, this is actually ridiculous. I remember him uh, crying, and I could have sworn his name was Moogie. The whole time, it was maybe the it was time. something it different. Moogie later, U U U nine. I yes, don't think. Correct. I'm pretty sure that was his name before. Was he playing as Moogie at TI? I'm pretty sure he was, but that sure doesn't that matter. Was? Either way, I'll read a tweet from BTS here because they summed it up nicely. The organization newbie has been banned indefinitely for match fixing from the Chinese Dota Two Professional Association. Uh, and all of its IMBA TV and Mars TV events. The players that we mentioned have also been given an indefinite ban. The ban from the CDA is lifetime for all players, and the organization has been removed from the CDA. This is not an official Valve ban. The CDA has given all information to Valve for review. So before we delve any deeper, let's just talk about this on the surface, what this means, um, mm -hmm. how big of a deal this is. This is... A TI winning organization, a TI winning player on a different org at the time. This is the biggest ban so far, although it's not Valve official yet. Mm -hmm. So, what are your thoughts, Cinderman? Uh, I mean, my thoughts are the big question is what does Valve do? I think that's the first thing I think here. I mean, obviously, if this is true, it's always difficult with stuff like this because sometimes proving match fixing can be a little bit like some people are how do i explain this so right now i think people are paying a lot of attention to this as a possible problem or as a problem that is real in especially some regions i think china is where it's most most uh the big the biggest problem out of all the regions but you know if you're really looking for a problem you're gonna find it mm -hmm. right so if everybody has this witch hunting mindset of, oh, there's match fixing everywhere, then every time players make stupid mistakes, people are going to say it's fixed, it's fixed. And I'm not here to say that match fixing isn't real. I'm just, I'm a bit worried, honestly, that people go way too much into this witch hunt mode and start throwing around false allegations. I'm not saying this is one. I think based on... Is there a clip or something? I just there's seen? a whole game. There's a whole replay. There's a whole game. Have you um, looked at it? But no, I haven't watched it. Um, I I don't know if I should. It's like I think on my stream, on my stream, people were asking me, "Hey, do you, will you watch the match fixed game uh, allegedly?" And I was like, "I mean, what does it really do for me? It, should I should I do it to 
get disappointed or should I like because then I'm kind of I don't know it's it's kind of hard to explain it man it's it's a bit weird it's like well how do they I'm, prove it for I'm looking I'm specifically there looking for flaws and if I find big enough flaws I can be like yes that's a correct verdict and if I'm in mm-hmm. doubt does that devalidate their claim like uh, I, I'm not really an expert in you know match fixing or cheating or anything so I don't know exactly what to like what to look for like sometimes things look suspicious in completely fine games like people make shit plays or make horrible decisions and you're like you were casting with me and we were like how the hell are they doing this like why would this ever happen hmm. like which just happens in example, regular dota medusa with a rapier going for a bounty rune getting killed and losing the game on the spot like yeah it, with the mindset that people have right now they would be like wow that's fucking fixed and i mean right people make stupid mistakes all the time so it's about I just want to not get to this point where everybody's looking for fixing everywhere, but where it's like, okay, this game is shady as fuck. And then you backtrack to the betting history of the game and you can clearly see, okay, something's being manipulated here. And I believe that's what happened here. Uh, I have to admit, I haven't looked very much into it. I read about it. I read the thread about it, uh, I but I haven't the, done extra Obviously, research, this is in so. China, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, but... Yeah, the paper trail is the most important. It's not just mm-hmm. that betting was on that game and it looked fishy because even that can be a coincidence, right? It's more about where that money ends up, whose account. Right. Uh, and even that is really tough to track because it could just be a, an offshore account or whatever the case may be. So it's interesting that you have that perspective. And again, I'm not saying this is the case. I'm just going to give you my first impression of what I thought, mm-hmm. which again, this could be horribly incorrect. But the fact that it came from China made me actually first think, is this real? Because you remember the whole Wings controversy, how they got like mm-hmm. cut out of the whole situation? Like, yeah. What's stopping anyone from doing that in just a different way? You know, I'm not, again, I'm not saying that's what happened here. I'm just saying, what's the actual proof? The fact that Valve hasn't come out and already banned them. So, uh, so who are you saying could have that motivation? The I other teams know. want to get rid of Newbie? And I they're like, have no idea. I don't know the ecosystem so, at all in that scene. So this is just, this isn't even speculation. This is just like, this is like conspiracy theory. Okay. Which right. usually is bullshit. I know, but yeah. that's just the first thing that popped in my head. Um, but it could obviously be real. We'll see what Valve ends up doing. That's going to be the most interesting thing. How long that takes them to investigate. The thing about things like this for me is that, and I know, I know this happens all the time in all sorts of things that people jump to conclusions or whatever, but you have to understand when you make allegations like this, you need to be really sure that yeah. you're right when you ban these players like this. Like, you're actually... Like, imagine it's wrong. Imagine that the CDA was wrong and this match wasn't fixed. The players were playing a bad game or whatever. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know what to expect and what to think here. Supposedly, Xiao8, I remember hearing this, that uh, Xiao8, who is obviously very, very renowned in China, said that if, if this game isn't fixed, I will eat shit. I think that's what those were his literal words about it. So he was like <laughs> super suspicious about it too, mm-hmm. right? So there's that definitely many created people the that snowball are super suspicious to begin with. Possibly, like when someone with that much renown says something like that, for him to say that, he needs to feel really sure that he's right. Yeah. Like it, it's a big deal. Um, so what I'm thinking here is, let's say this is sent to review at Valve, and Valve are looking through it. What happens if Valve don't find proof? What if they're like? We don't think this is substantial enough or sufficient enough proof to confirm that this is a fixed match. Right. What does CDA do? Do they lift theirs? Or are they just like, well, respectfully, we disagree with Valve. You guys are still banned. Or do they think Valve are How the much power final does the CDA judge, have? You know? I, this would be a great topic. I think have, they like, control all Chinese leagues, at least so the big ones. I'm pretty not, sure about that. What is it's their the connection, Chinese Dota Association, right? What is their connection with Perfect World? Again, I don't want to go off on con- conspiracy theory type stuff. But, I don't. I don't uh, know enough about it. I don't want to say something that's just flat well, out wrong. So this, I, I can't say. That. Okay. So what I'm going to say is basically true to an extent. I don't know what extent that is. Mm-hmm. Perfect World has a lot of power and a lot of sway with Valve. Valve do not want to piss off Perfect World. This is just a fact of nature. So if there's a connection there, maybe Valve are feeling somewhat powerless to a degree. You know what I mean? Because that's in a com- like this isn't just another country, okay? This is China. This is like where most of your business mm-hmm. is coming from. Um, so there's that aspect as well. 
to consider. So you're saying you think Valve will compromise their ethics for that? Like if I, they think it's a fixed match that they're just going to sit back and or that they don't think it, it's a fixed match I think rather, it that depends. They won't? I mean it entirely yeah. depends on how much this how much power the CDA has, how much what their connections are to perfect world and how mm-hmm. much they push for it, right? But right. If I do I think that that's a possibility? Yes, do I think that's the case? Probably not. Um but okay. again, this is just this is not just another country. I mean, there's been right. a lot of drama with China and esports in general this just this year alone, uh, where people bend their will, and it makes sense from a business standpoint. Uh, so I don't right. think ethics really comes first in a lot of these situations, Cinder. Yeah, actually, I don't know if this was what you were going for, but you did bring up an interesting like perspective just a moment ago with. If this be- imagine if this becomes a weapon, right? If the orgs in China, there's a lot of money in Dota in China. The contracts are big, and yeah. the pers- like it's way more. How to say it's way more like regular sports, if you will, in China than it is in any other country in the world. The with the size of the contracts, the buyout prices, uh, the way players get treated, everything is more like that. Imagine if you're one of the influential people in these orgs, and there's a lot of money involved, and you could technically. Like, if there's nothing, or if there's very little to lose by by making these allegations, you're like someone powerful. You're like, we don't we don't want like this competition, so we're gonna defame newbie. And if they actually get banned, it's perfect. I'm not saying this is what's happening, right? But just like the, again, the, this is the perspective that I'm worried about is that people start abusing this, basically. Yeah. Where if you throw around these allegations and sometimes they hit, even if it's not a fixed match, then you can eliminate your strongest competition by oh they had a bad game so they must be fixing so now we're going to make drama out of it and hope it hits um that's shit so yep this better this better be a a good allegation have we had a case before because i think we have we've had previous fixing allegations that were declined it's just it's not really been a big problem in in do what do you in mean Dota history as in throwing. Valve says they're not they didn't match, match not fix? not Valve but where th- there were there was speculation that certain matches were getting fi- I don't remember this is a couple of years ago uh, there was speculation that matches were fixed and it was confirmed they weren't that has happened before it's not confirmed like every time who, there's though? been a claim um I don't remember I think the tournament organizer oh. um of said tournaments back okay. then so you know like th- there's been cases before I don't remember um I don't remember many instances of it, though. Like, we haven't had that many of them. Um, right. When, the, when it comes the to... The only reason... So let me just say this. The only reason that I am so adamant about talking about it from this perspective is that I feel like it's it's like a fad right now, almost. And I really don't want it to become that. I see people throwing around this match fix, this match fix, that all over the place. When a team is playing bad, the game is fixed. And I know a lot of it is just people memeing. But if there's enough people that talk about that shit all the time, the 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 attitude and the mentality can kind of fester that the pros are just that's true. you know throwing games and that's fucking terrible for the game I if mean, people think some, that's what's going on. Some like, traditional sports have gone through eras like way in the past that I mean it's not just match fixing but sometimes like drug related that even like cocaine not like performance enhancing drugs but like there's a coke period in the NBA there's match fixing in baseball way back when that have just like tarnished the league as a whole. Um mm-hmm. But from Valve's perspective, I mean, they've banned a few people before, right? The, like, the only people that come to mind are like South Americans, like Z-Talk and uh, what's the really famous guy? Starts with an S. Uh, Smash. Yeah, Smash. And they banned there's a, the DDZ from Southeast Asia. There's a certain Huge level talents. of The whole unknown. Arrow team got banned. I think. There's a certain level unknown when it comes to this kind of stuff, right? Where Valve ends up permanently banning people and... They don't really, they're not really transparent with what they found. Like, we can only mm-hmm. assume that it's true because they don't really have uh, motivation to like fuck people over for no reason. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, we still, there's a level of unknown. And when you're talking about China, it's like 10 layers deeper, you know, of right. what the fuck is going on. Nobody knows. Now, this, this is a whole different thing, but we've talked about this in the past where people get banned for life, which I personally, even if they're actually match fixing and they admit to it at some point, I think lifetime is still too harsh. 
for most people, if you get like a five, six, whatever year ban, that is lifetime. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And there's a certain level. And I've talked again. I'm not okay with match fixing. I'm not okay with cheating. But sometimes you're this 16 year old kid. China, there's no excuse. But <laughs> like in South America, if you're a 16 year old kid, you're not really making ends meet. It's a completely different world than most people. Uh, depending on their situation, it could be just a horrible situation where you kind of have to do something drastic to make ends meet. Yeah, we don't know their perspective, you know. Um, but obviously, some sort of a ban is warranted. But yeah, I'm. How long do you think it's going to take for Valve to come out with a statement? Because they're working on the know. battle pass. Do you think <laughs> is it going to be aligned <laughs> with the battle pass? Yeah, the janitor is busy with the battle pass, so he can't look through these and review them. <laughs> Right. Um, I don't know. The, 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 I think a good question early is, are they actually going to do it? Like, will, will Valve make an official statement or not? Uh, or is this, like, what's Valve's stance on it? Is it match fixing is happening? Because the previous players that have been banned for match fixing, did they get banned for it from match fixing in Valve events or allegations at Valve events? Or was it just at any event? Like, does Valve get involved outside of the DPC? I think it's any event. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so if it's any event, then they have to say something, right? They yes. have to make a decision. I think and so. Especially for me, with, with the, the fact that players. it's taking long is a good thing. I think what I don't want is that this gets posted and then Valve is like two hours later, they're like, yep, it's fixed. Like, right. I want them to take their time to do the research correctly because punishing players, no matter who they are, for this kind of stuff, is it's life-changing. So you want to definitely make sure that you're doing it right. It's kind of like... When someone, see, that's that's also, that's a totally different topic, but when people get um, sentenced in real life and the proof isn't like overwhelmingly, like it's not overwhelmingly evident they did it, that is just, you know, like when you hear stories about people getting released from lifetime in prison after 15 years and it was found out, oh, by the way, they actually didn't do it, like, what the fuck, man? You know, yep. <laughs> like seriously, well, you I just ruined this person's life. For basically. every one it's of those. insane. For every one of those, there's a guy that actually did it that either gets off or gets like a much less yeah. severe sentence and they just end up doing it again. Um, yeah. and that's a whole nother um, topic of discussion, I guess. It is, I know. So um, my final question on this, I know we took a lot of time with this, but have you heard of any of the players making a statement? No, and I think that's obviously Because I haven't purposeful. heard anything. Newbie has definitely told them not to say shit. I'm guessing mm-hmm. they have lawyers involved. I mean, why not at this point? Uh, yeah. I don't know how things work in China, but in the U.S., that's pretty much exactly what would happen as well. Um, from like, because we're not just talking about some random team. This is newbie. This is a high-end organization. They won TI before. They have a lot of money behind them, and it's China, which is major money. So, right. They probably. I, I don't know how it works know. there though with lawyers and whatnot. I'm still even after all of this talk. I'm still like debating with myself if I. Like what what it does that I watch this game. Like if I'm <clears throat> if I can convincingly find evidence myself watching this game, or if I'm way too lenient and giving way too much benefit of the doubt on mistakes. Because I've heard there's different perspectives, right? Uh supposedly lyrical, for example, watched through the entire game. Um and he made the statement that he didn't find anything suspicious. That doesn't mean he's right. It might mean that his mindset is way more lenient. Mm-hmm. But obviously, like if people come out and make these statements, I don't know if it how if if it's good or bad, and how helpful it really is that everybody looks through this replay. Maybe wisdom it's... of the crowd is good. I don't know. But like I said, the crowd right now is bloodthirsty as fuck for this. So yeah, <laughs> it's, I think it's less about know, the play. Like I don't think watching the replay will help anyone because there's going to be a certain level of bias no matter what. It's about mm-hmm. the bank accounts, the transactions, and that shit. Which again, if you're Valve, yeah. you have to go through China. What's real? I don't know. I don't know how you do it. Um, I don't know either. But we shall see. I believe Newbie made a... They did make a statement at some point, essentially saying, we respect the decision, but we deny that we did it, essentially is what they said. Uh, so yeah, we'll keep you guys apprised on... Why would they respect the decision? Well, it was if translated they didn't do it, they shouldn't be respecting English. shit. It's, I don't know. It's a nice way of saying... Uh, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. A very, very nice way of saying fuck you. Um, but again, that that's a translation from Chinese to English. I don't know how. Okay, maybe yeah, maybe there's something lost in translation there, man. I, I that respect would be unbelievable your decision. To me. 
if I got banned for fixing without having done anything, I would be furious. <laughs> right. Like, what a uh, dude, that would be okay. I don't even know what to say about that. I'm sure there's politics and stuff involved. I mean, I don't yeah, think that's probably. the craziest thing to say. I'm surprised at your reaction to that. Maybe it's a because 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 you you can't respect that decision if you didn't do it. Like that's just not. I don't know. I can't get behind that mindset. If you're it's, accused of cheating and you didn't do it and you get punished, you can't respect that decision. Well, I agree, but that's more like a PR statement, right? What else are you gonna say? We're going to war uh, with you. We didn't do it, and we will be appealing. That's it. You don't have to say you respect the decision. I agree. Like, it's more on the passive I, side. I don't know, I guess. man. That's it's a bit. I don't really thought about I, I, it. Doesn't, to me, it doesn't even make them look any better. Like I just think it does nothing to say that they respect that decision. I don't feel like it helps the organization be like, mm. you know, it, it's kind of a, you, you can't win here, I think. If you respect the decision and you admit you did it, people don't care that you respect the decision. You're fucking banned for life and your org is discredited. Right. And if you, if you insist you didn't do it, then... Why would people want you to respect the decision of getting banned? You should be up in arms and be angry that you're getting banned fakely. I don't know. That to me, that's just weird. If you were wrongly it's accused of something, I want to. I wonder yeah. what you look like when you're legitimately just irate. Can you describe yourself to the best of your ability? Like, when? What is the angriest you've <laughs> ever been in your entire life? Oh, I don't know. I don't. I can't remember. Nothing comes. You never lost control. Of your emotions? I guess I, I guess I flush it out. I flush it out of my memories because it's bad. You know? <laughs> it's I learn from bad. it, and then I learn from it, and then I remove it, and then I move on. Man, That's you are it. just the perfect specimen. You know that, Sindra? Uh, doubt. So, from one drama to another, uh, this one I think might surprise. I, I would be shocked if we talk about this a lot because we've talked about this mm. so much in the past already. But yep. drama between Bulldog and Kyle. Essentially, Kyle said something to the effect of people that watch, uh, like the big streamers that watch um, tournaments as they're going, take away viewership, and thus, I believe he threw out the number 40% revenue yeah. was essentially lost, which was just a random number. Um, Kyle. And then Bulldog responded with, Kyle, take... Your take on stream exclusivity rights has to be the dumbest, most misinformed comment I think I ever heard. Please do not utter yourself on this topic when you legitimately think this, the stream would get 40% more revenue. So a lot of... Uh, Kyle ended up responding with a very eloquent post, I have to say. Um, so my take, Cinder, and we'll get yours. Mm -hmm. I don't think either of them are really wrong. I think Kyle put out a random number, and I, I think at times it can be that much. I don't know what the I, average would yeah. be. That's just pulling something out of thin air. But what Bulldog does, what other streamers do, I can't blame them. It's not illegal. Mm -hmm. Do I like the system? No. I think it fucks over the tournament organizers. Nothing has changed. It's the exact same situation. Um, I think both are right in their own respective ways. And Kyle, to his credit, was not... Uh, I mean, I guess he could have worded it a little differently to begin with. On, on I think it was during a panel... But yeah. he's not blaming Bulldog. Uh, he's saying, "Have at it." Yeah, you know that that those are the rules. But it fucks over tournament organizers. So yeah. I agree with both. So, so I, I mean, I don't really know what they're trying to accomplish. If you're trying to like guilt trip the streamers into not doing it and being like, "Yeah, you guys are allowed to do it, but your dicks." Or uh, <laughs> Kyle was saying, "I would do the same thing." Right. If if I was in your position, I would have done the same thing because I'm, you know, you're looking out for your interests. So, like, I don't really know what we're trying to get at here. The I'll try to make it short though. The real, the the shame here is that, and what started the whole drama to begin with, honestly, I think was Kyle's wording made it very suggestive that he was talking about bulldog, and the way it was said was kind of in a condescending tone. Mm. And then the forty percent thing, which. I think it was a shame because I think Kyle was making some really good points, but then he just threw out this number out of nowhere that had no substance or no proof in reality, no root in reality. And when you do stuff like this, it kind of, for me at least, it kind of makes it easier to discredit your opinion, right? If you start throwing out numbers like that that aren't proven, then do you really know what you're talking about, right? And I think Kyle really knows what he's talking about, but sometimes he likes using hyperbole or just, you know, Laying it on oh, thick. We, we live in an age where, and I've done this a few times myself, maybe not on purpose all the time, where no one's going to listen to you unless you say something outlandish, right? 
Yeah, it's just the matter of the. I don't know. It's just how I we, think I like think the do. the way he said it already was good enough to draw attention to it. I think. Mm-hmm. But anyway, the the pro- the point here is that people started focusing way more on the forty percent. Is it true or not? And the whole meme around forty percent, rather than the value of the statement itself, like. Mm-hmm what the problem is, how much it matters. And then we can have people look at the actual numbers if we want to. People that have the insight, have the analytics and the statistics on stuff, can check the, the stream numbers, can make estimates, right? It's, on, it's always only going to be estimates because you can't say, well, Bulldog was streaming during the tournament and had 8,000 viewers. How many viewers does the stream have if Bulldog doesn't stream? Who knows? Like That will always be a guess. It won't be 8,000, I'll tell you that much. They're not all going to watch. Yeah. A lot of them watch because it's Bulldog, not because it's a pro game. Like tons of his fans want to watch him, and that's great, you know. But the tournament organizers can't make that an argument that they're losing X viewers or X revenue. The bigger problem here is not really whether private streamer X or private streamer Y is is watching the stream. It's the fact that the tournament organizers can't sell exclusivity rights. That is the problem, and it's not. It doesn't really matter who the streamer is. If Bulldog wasn't streaming, somebody else would be watching. If Gorg wasn't, somebody else would be watching. Blah, blah, blah. Like, they're just targeted because they're the big right. ones. But it's a problem either way that you well, can't sell exclusivity The ironic as a thing about this, so. Cinderin, is that CSGO does have exclusivity rights. Valve yes, lets people I know. do that. I know. And that's exactly what we want. We think that that is... It's so weird that this is the same company, right? You have two games, both massive. Dota 2, CSGO. They're mm-hmm. on like floor three, floor four, whatever the fuck. They're in close vicinity of each other. They act totally different. It's, it's as if they are beta testing different ideologies, going with complete opposite ends of the spectrum, seeing what sticks, what doesn't. Why not meld both of them into something that you know will be great for both scenes? Like there's no reason that the, like it's not like, yeah, they're different games, but you can you can take stuff from each respective game and make something better out of the system that we have in place. And ex- mm-hmm. exclusivity, I think, uh, I mean, we've been talking about this for so long. I don't, we don't really need to go into it, but no. The, the issue right now where it stands is the totem pole, right? In theory, everything we want is everyone to be as balanced as possible on one end of the spectrum to the other, okay? Doesn't mean that they have to be exactly even, in everything they get in terms of revenue and whatnot. But right now, and I've said this so many times, other than Valve who's at the top, there's pro players, streamers, and then everybody else is so fucking far down the totem pole. Tournament organizers, casters, like everybody in between. It's not remote. There's such a huge gap, and that needs to be bridged to a degree, I think. I think it's too big of a discrepancy right now. And exclusivity takes care of a decent amount of that, honestly. But again... If you guys want to hear more about that conversation, you can check out about eight other episodes <laughs> that we've done <laughs> in this last year. Because holy shit, obviously nothing's going to change. But the, well, I say that uh, kind of pessimistic attitude. But at the same time, it's good for this stuff to be brought up every now and then to refresh people's memories. And the fact that Reddit, by the way, was backing Kyle from what I was reading was surprising to me. Maybe there is a a shift occurring where people are starting to understand that, hey, Catering a little bit more to tournament organizers or casters or whoever the case may be actually will benefit everyone long term anyway, as opposed to the short sightedness that we have right now. Um, I think, I think it's a battle between ideology versus outcome, right? Like, some people will fight to the death for this ideology that this game is publicly owned, even though it's not. I mean, it's Valve's game, and they're very much owning it but the fact that the the content is for the public some like the ideology of that holds a lot of value some people and i think it's beautiful too i think it's nice but it's like sometimes you got to look at is how much is that like compared to what we could have instead how much value does it hold and that's where my answer isn't clear like to me it's not obvious that oh, if we just gave tournament organizers exclusivity, we would have in, an insane scene that would bloom and blossom like crazy compared to what we have. Because I, I just don't know if that's true or not. But not anymore. it's well, not to something I know for sure is that if you gave tournament organizers exclusivity, they would make more money. Now, what would that do? I don't know. Would it make the tournament organizers more money, the end? Or would it make the casters more money, the tier two players more money? Would it make more tournaments? 
because they have more money to spend to make more tournaments? Would it make more content? Would it grow the tier two scene? That's some of the things that people are expecting. Um, but then again, then it's about like how much do you value your ability to stream anything? Because it's is I mean when you think about it, it is kind of beautiful, right? It's not something that's very common mm -hmm. uh, among any sort of product of this kind. So it is unique, and some people love that, and some people think eh, it's whatever. It's not worth what we what it costs basically uh, and valve seem to be very ideologically fixed on this i think they're aware that changing it could be to the benefit of the scene perhaps but uh, they have a bit of an ideological approach to this where they think it's maybe it's because maybe it's because of the well they don't have that for csgo so i'm not really buying that right like um oh dota it's a free market approach right it's the same thing if you think about it, it's in a lot of ways, it's the same concept in some respect to custom games where somebody mm -hmm. can literally copy your code and Valve doesn't care about it. They can copy paste it, change one thing and put your shit on the workshop themselves. It's kind of the, the, we talked about this again, and this is my last so, point on this topic. Mm -hmm. I think the easiest way, if you don't want to do exclusivity to help the tournament organizers out and the streamers can still cast the replays is Dota TV has a 10 minute delay. Doesn't that just fix like everything? It's not perfect, but it fixes a lot of the issues that you would have. People that are watching it's these big streamers, something that could be done. they're obviously only going to watch if they're sticking to that stream and it's a 10 minute delay. They're obviously there for that streamer and not the game specifically. Right? And then people will come from the official stream and they will go to that streamer's channel and they will start sparling the fuck out of the chat. Right. But, but people are pieces of shit. You can't really work around that all the time. Uh, oh, I know. I know. I don't, I'm not saying that's the problem here. I'm just saying that's going to Fix happen. people. <laughs> Why don't we go to that route, huh? Yeah, good <laughs> luck with that. I've tried uh, for years. I'm still an idiot. Oh, dear. It's not working. Self-deprecating is always syndrome. Any more thoughts before we uh, get to the next topic? No, I think that's it. I mean, yeah, like you said, we've talked it to death before. So not so much stuff to say. Uh. One last update for Dota 2. Recently, this was posted by Wickram, who tweeted, declining to accept a match for a custom game now applies a custom game cooldown. So I'll talk about this briefly. First of all, big, big, big shout out to Cyborg Matt. Uh, we talked to him recently about some issues uh, we've been having with our mod and just the workshop or the custom game realm in general. There's a lot of shit that can be easily fixed. Uh, which I can briefly go over a couple of them that are kind of big issues. Um, but he's the one that's basically getting in Valve's ear about some of this stuff. And there was obviously a Reddit post recently by my boy Toyoka talking about this specific issue. So for this one, I don't know how much you play Custom Game Center. This wasn't really an issue for Pog as much as the mm -hmm. maybe top two mods have been crippled by this, where there would be malicious bots creating games um, right, I've heard about that. And the game just never starts. So whether it's a different version or like they're on an older version or um, they're just never accepting, they, these lobbies would just keep coming up over and over and over and you could literally never start a game. And you never know who the bot is, right, in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so now you get a cooldown. Probably a it's, different custom game creator that has interest in sabotaging yes. your mod. It's a yes. possibility at least. Oh, it's not just a possibility. And I'm going to talk about another issue that hasn't been fixed yet. So if you go to the arcade, you'll see there's a couple different things, right? They have like Game of the Day, which and it's actually decently good at what it does. It, uh, it randomly picks a top, I don't know what the actual algorithm is, but it's there to promote uh, mods that maybe don't have a lot of players. Now, to find a mod, how do you do it, Cinderin, off the top of your head? Like what's your system if you're just perusing the arcade? Is there anything... They like do specifically. To, when you say find a mod, are you saying I know which one I want to find or I'm looking to explore? Let's say you want to explore. I have no idea. I okay. guess I go to the page with... I, I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> so there's one way, which is go to... I, I can't remember the tabs offhand. You guys have to forgive me. There's like three tabs. I can or boot the like game that. right now. And look sure. At it if you want. There's one tab where you can look at like the most popular mod in the last week. There's not that many filters, so it's usually going to be like a lot of the same mods to begin with. Uh, but there is one tab. I believe it's the first one, if you could tell me the name of that. It's not Lobby List, I don't think. Oh, no, it is. I think it is Lobby List. So a very large portion of people 
whether they know it or not, will go onto the lobby list tab in the arcade mm-hmm. and they'll see what mods have lobbies up because it basically shows from top to bottom, from most to least, like the top 10, let's say, how many open lobbies there are currently, okay? This is the biggest way to gain traction as a mod right now. Now, the problem is you have people abusing the system. Like, you'll see some of the top mods have 50-some lobbies up, which if that were true, basically what that means is those are open lobbies for anybody to join, but they're never (laughs) starting the game. So these are bots as well. This is funny to look at. Like, so the the top when I go to the lobby list, the first like fifty seem legit. Actually, right now, I don't know if that's unusual. Um, with fifty like, lobbies, lobbies open, no, that's not legit. And then right after it, there's like twenty five in a row of a map called Anime, <laughs> hosted yeah. in South Africa with one out of ten players. Right. And then so what there's you some do... more maps. Scroll down. Dawn of War Solo Edition, Singapore, one out of eight. Dawn of War, Singapore, one out of eight. And then, I mean, all sorts of shit. Roshan Defense with a million. I'm not going to name names here, but there was a guy that works on a mod right now that's pretty popular. He messaged me after Pog came out and he was giving me advice, unsolicited as usual. But his advice was he had like a one, two, three, four. Okay. And one of them was you need to create bots, put them in South Africa so they never actually fill up because nobody plays in that region. And you have like 20 to 30 of them and your game will come up on this list and thus you will get a bunch of players. We haven't done that yet because it seems really fucking... What's the right word? It's immoral. Mm-hmm. But it works. It 100% works. And that is a huge issue, I think. Um, yep. They just need to change the way that that uh, works. But anyway, it's good to see Valve uh, fixing something that was being abused. Hopefully they do more of that in the future. Um, okay, so next topic is artifact. So, kind of a big update, Cinderin. Um, Wait, is hang on, give me a sec. Isn't there a pretty, isn't there a pretty elegant solution to this? Actually, like a really easy fix when you think about it to the custom games. Yeah. So let's say there's these bots, and let's say you can't manage and delete the bots all the time. Let's say they're there. Mm-hmm. Okay. What if? The way that it shows up on open or that the overview, instead of showing open lobbies, it shows ongoing games. Yes. And th- that's how it measures popularity. Either ongoing so games you're like, or player wow, count. There's a lot of people playing Path of Guardians. So it doesn't say 32 open lobbies of Roshan Defense and three of Pog, but it says 1,000 ongoing lobbies. Yes. And people are like, oh, this is a popular mod. I want to play that. Isn't that just... So that's my easy? idea as well i mean yes it is very easy it's a simple filter switch right yeah, you're just it filtering it by a different easy. way the only problem with that is it it helps out the mods that are already on top which isn't necessarily an issue because uh, they have some you know the game of the day stuff kind of helps out the smaller mods and whatnot but anything is better than what they have you in could, the game right now it's garbage. then you could um make a discover tab right E, how would that work? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things I can do for sure. I mean, essentially, just, what happened I'm, is I'm just shotgunning here. I'm not sure if all of this is good. Like, I'm seeing from chat right now. Well, if you make it like that, the bots are just going to f- create fake lobbies, fill them, and play the game. But then the like the factor of bots you need is like a factor ten suddenly. I don't know if that matters. Maybe it's irrelevant, but right. it definitely makes it harder for them to do. Not even just a factor ten. Like, let's say Path of Guardians at any point has. Just as an example, let's say it has 5,000 people playing. You need 5,000 bots to play your custom map to show up there. Yeah. Compared to right now where you just need to have 30 that open a lobby with one in each and then it's on top because POG games fill all the time. So there's not many open lobbies. Exactly. Because they keep getting played, right? Yeah, there's a lot uh, of stuff they can do. I know. Uh, but Discover tab abuse. sounds interesting to me though. Like if you think about how it works on say something like Spotify, right? I know maybe this is a bad comparison, but uh, discover weekly for example for me has been a huge feature that every week based on stuff i like i get access to music and a lot of the time i don't really like it but sometimes it's a hit mm-hmm. if the arcade could do something similar where it's like okay you've played this type of game like it just categorizes okay path of guardians is this type of game uh like you just make some sort of tags for the games like one is tower defense one is rpg one is you know whatever uh and then based on that it can suggest you other maps that have the same tags once in a while and that's the discover tab that way you can find maps that are similar to stuff that you like and perhaps that 
could work. I don't know, like a tagging system. Right. So, no, I agree. It was an idea. I mean, I understand why Valve is not prioritizing stuff like this because obviously they're working on the battle pass. But then again, this has been ongoing for years now. It's just getting worse. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of what it feels like me in any project that I, I'm a part of. I, I start out with a lot of passion. And then once it's out, I'm like, eh, all right, on to the next. <laughs> they kind of just forget about it. Uh, but they did not forget about Artifact Cinderin because there has oh. been a blog post today. People will start getting invites next week to play in the new Artifact. Are you excited? I hope I get to play. So here's the problem. Especially <laughs> if I get to stream it. Yeah, you're, you're allowed to stream it. Uh, it's for people that have had the game since, I believe, the cutoff date's already passed. If you don't have the game, you're not going to get it for this phase, at least. Uh, they're going to be testing gameplay balance, hero identity, color identity, social features, card unlocks, ranked play, replay, spectating, and the campaign. Um, how do you get in? If you played Artifact 1.0 and would like to help us test, check your email for a sign-up link. Slots are limited, but we will be gradually adding more and more people to the beta, so don't worry if you get it right away. Um, they had, I believe it's March 30th, that's what I was looking for, is the cutoff date for people that uh, can get it. Now, this is going to be, this is going to sound very entitled coming from me. <laughs> the, apparently, the beta list is uh, completely random, according to them. Okay. So, this is the issue. I'm trying to think of my words here for a moment. Is it wrong? I am more valuable. No, no, no. There it is. I feel like I am owed a beta key. Mm. I think Slacks and me specifically, the two people, are most owed. Because you're the two players? or That's one reason. But the other okay. is because we we went all in. We believed in the game. We still believe in the game. And... How do I come off as not super entitled? Because it already is too late, I think. But here, here's the thing. This is the reason I don't feel like... This was a question I was posing earlier. If you're entitled, is that always a negative? I know it's a negative connotation. Mm-hmm. But is it always wrong, in your opinion? Before I go on. Let me just look up what the definition of the word is. <laughs> Are you Believing always Believing oneself wrong? to be inherently deserving of privileges or special treatment. I don't think you inherently feel that way. You feel like it because of something you did. Okay. So Right? Entitlement because... is when you're just like... Like you don't have a good reason to feel like you deserve treatment, special right. treatment. It's just you, just you just do, kind of, right? I guess... At least that's the way I think of the word. I'm trying to think of the best way to describe how I feel. And I'm trying not to... You feel to like you deserve it. it. That's something else. To me, at least. I think there's a difference. Entitled so this, people feel like they deserve special treatment all the time without doing something special for it. Okay, fair enough. It's like, if you're, if you're the greatest player of all time in basketball, mm-hmm. and you're expecting a free that meal. if you ask nicely, if you can get to watch the finals next year, I don't think that's entitled. But mm-hmm. I think it's entitled if you're like... Um, I, I, I mean, I can't even think of a good argument. For, like, entitled no, 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 people understand. that feel okay. like they deserve no, stuff that, for no reason. So That makes me feel a little better because the last thing I wanted to come off as a selfish piece of garbage. But this is this is the reason I'm tiptoeing around this topic so much, Cinder, is because... Um, I think you deserve it. So, I mean, I'll back you up right away. Of thank course. you, Cinder. You Ice Frog, I know you're listening. Um, you should be in that. Ice the, Frog isn't working on that game. The reason I'm tiptoeing around this is because Ice there's Frog's this dead. feeling... And I know we've talked about this Sorry. before. There's this feeling among the artifact community that everybody that was in the artifact beta fucked things up, and that's the reason that the game did not succeed. Uh, I'm not saying that's entirely untrue because I can't backseat everybody that was in the beta. But again, but we've been I over didn't before. Do wrong. No, no, no. There's plenty of people, <laughs> including myself, that gave feedback. Nothing was ever changed, and the thing that is most backseated about the the downfall of Artifact, the original, is the monetization, which was never tested on anyone anyway. Yeah, we anyway. didn't get to test it. Yeah, we didn't so get to test I it So I think all. a little bit of an unfair picture has been painted for people like myself, Slacks, and the rest. True. Did we go a little ham on uh, marketing and trying to pump it up? Yes, but it's not like 
I mean, it wasn't I, because Valve told you to. It was genuinely because you were excited about the game and wanted it to succeed. The I only mean, time I ever got malicious. paid by Valve to do anything artifact related was PAX event. That was literally yeah. two days of my life. After that, never. I mean, they never ran. And that the was already. But. When was that event actually? Was that that was before release? That was August. Yeah. Um, but so here's the inherent issue, right? If it actually is random, which you know, hopefully it's not. If I get a key. There will be mm-hmm. a negative reaction. If you and I get a key, if Slacks gets a key, there'll be a negative reaction to the point that Valve, uh, people will think that Valve just gave us keys, right? So mm-hmm. even if we were randomly picked, I believe Valve will not give us keys as a result of the reaction. But wait, hang sense. on. If, they say, if Valve said they randomly give keys, yes, and you and Slacks are the players, then it means one of you will get it and not the other. And that player will test the game alone. <laughs> God, I hate you so much. Anyway, the reason I'm overthinking this is because I want to fucking play so bad. I've been waiting, Ugh! as has everybody else. I mean, I've been in it for the long haul, so if I don't get it <clears throat> right away, I'll live. Uh, I'll be in it, it for suck. the short haul then. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, guys? I've only been waiting a year and a half. <laughs> if it goes another week, I'm out. But other than that, <laughs> we'll be fine. Uh, yeah, so are you? I'm really surprised that they're doing the beta test like this. Uh, I think it's really cool. Uh, from the standpoint that you can stream it right away, apparently. There's no NDAs. Uh, they're just openly beta testing this next release of Artifact. Do you think that has any negative ramifications, potentially? Wait, or- wait, wait. Have you checked? Have you actually, have you checked your email in the last hour? I have not. Okay. Why? I, no, I'm not going to do this to you. It's I next. Was, no, no. I know what you're going to. It was very I'm transparent that you're going to say that you got a key yourself. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You don't get keys oh. until next week. Damn. Yeah, that's what you think. That's true. That's but true. I have had one for the last month. I'll, tra- I'll trade it for you know, a Valorant. If I, key. if I found out that a bunch. <laughs> Dude, I wish I had another Valorant key for you. I feel so bad. I play I play every couple I days now. I don't care that much. It's just so funny. <laughs> Imagine if you got it and you started uh, playing, you just quit to go pro in Valorant, Cinderin. Anyway, are you are you I, we already asked if you're looking forward to are you surprised? Oh, yeah, that's what that was my question. By the the open beta transparency. Do you think it's good? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we, we've talked about this in the past. That it's a change of direction from Valve where they're trying to have more transparency and more communication. Were you expecting community. something like this then? For Artifact? Yeah. Yeah. I was. Based on how they've been blog posting the last few months with Artifact, I think so. I mean, it's pretty clear. It seems, it seems very much in line with what they did for Underlords, right? Mm. So it does seem to be a direction they're taking. I don't know if they're doing as much of it with CSGO though with dota they're arguably not doing as much transparency they're doing some more i would say but not to this level right they're not like hey guys i mean sometimes they make a post saying for example with the battle pass right they said this is when it's going to come out roughly whereas in the past they didn't even give any sort of indication and people were just guessing and suddenly it drops out of nowhere right Mm -hmm. yeah so there's there's like steps there too but i would say it's not as concrete as it is with this. And that might be a very deliberate choice because they find it harder to predict um, how quickly Dota 2 features can be implemented. And probably because I would imagine on a desk somewhere, there's a pile of stuff that's undone for Dota and they need to find out what order to do it in. Because the game really needs a spring cleaning right now. Uh, with like good bugs or inconsistencies or different problems or tool tips that are wrong like all sorts of small things that you could go over step by step um and then it's just a question of what they give priority right but yeah just definitely the game needs some love right now i think artifact needs more love it's literally dead right now cinderin okay it needs the revival that is artifact Mm. 2.0 well they're working on it do you think it's going to be a whole new client what if people want to play the original artifact maybe they actually talked about this before I think it's a different client now that I think about it. I don't remember. For the 60 that, people that play yeah. every day, they're going to be very angry that they can't play the original anymore for nostalgia's sake. You know. Um, anyway, next topic of discussion um, is Half-Life Alex Workshop. Before we get into this, 
uh, I have gotten more comments than I was expecting over the last few weeks, months, asking me to talk about my Half-Life Alex experience because we talked about it once or twice and I hadn't really mm -hmm. gone past the first 30 minutes of the game. And I'm here to say that has still not changed. I have not put on the VR headset since that point, Cinderin. I do not like putting the VR headset on. Uh, the game seemed really good, but apparently not good enough for me to put the VR headset on anymore. So I'll you update are a you. Very lazy person. That's yeah. let's just get that out there. Is that really? I don't think that's laziness. I mean, I have a fucking dent in my head from this headset. I think you're entitled. You're like. <laughs> I should be able to play VR games without a VR headset because no, I'm I was me. actually thinking about this some more. And I think if Half-Life Alex or Half-Life 3 or whatever you want to call it came out on the PC, it would not have been met with... Uh, like, people would have been excited for it. But there's no mm -hmm. way you can blow people away anymore with something like that unless it's just a complete change in direction, which VR kind of is. And so in that sense, it was actually genius for Valve to come out with Half-Life Alex this way. But yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, can't, the, the I feedback can't do of the game is still amazingly, yes, overwhelmingly positive, right? Yeah. It's just, it's okay if it's not for you. Like, that's how it is with everything. We think Dota 2 is amazing. A lot of people think the game isn't for them. Right. There are games that people say you have to play this game. I try it for a couple of hours. I'm like, you know, eh, it's okay. So, you know. Whether it's because of the hardware or because of the experience or whatever it is, there's nothing wrong with disliking a game. You could still appreciate that it is a really good game, but it's just not for you. Right. For any reason. So that's fine. But what we're, the topic is actually about now, uh, Half-Life Alex mm -hmm. workshop and editor tools have been released, uh, which essentially means you can create assets, you can create levels for, like little map or scenarios for Half-Life Alex which is fucking yep. awesome. There's already people pushing stuff to the workshop. You can just download them and play it, like little scenarios that they've made. And obviously with more time, cooler stuff is going to come out. Make uh, Dota in Half-Life? Yes, uh, but in VR, obviously. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. But this is super cool. Like The whole idea behind the workshop is so fucking cool. <laughs> and we still never had that episode where we talked about how the workshop is dead for Dota. But hopefully it doesn't go down that road for Half-Life Alex as well. What's so fun? Sorry, I'm just... I was like, I wonder what the comments are like on this update, right? The fact that this is now there. And I'm just scrolling through it. And there's like so many comments with, oh, wow, yes. And then I go to page two. And there's this one person writing, focus on Team Fortress 2, please. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't help but laugh. That's so funny. <laughs> uh, oh, that so guy's funny. in for a rude oh awakening. Uh, I believe that that oh. franchise is not only dead in the water for TF2, I can never see TF3 ever being released. Um, because it's the, the genre is just it's not it's too hard? I don't think it's good. Mm. Like, look at Overwatch. They tried to create TF2. It's a piece of fucking shit. I don't well, that doesn't mean the <laughs> game mode or the idea is inherently shit. It means uh, Blizzard put their fingers on it, right? No, that's, that's a good point. I just don't think it's something interesting enough for Valve to ever pursue again, in all honesty. Could be wrong. Could be. Uh, Dota 3, I, I also can't see that in even the next 10 years. I can't see that. I but could actually see that. What, I could. what would they improve on with Dota 3 versus 2? Like, what, why not just update the game like they are now? Mm. Like, what in the engine is limiting our experience? Not necessarily, like, to make it Dota 3, do they have to change the engine? Okay, that's an interesting road if you want to like, take that. Okay, you, let's you say, could say For example, let's say they made some really drastic improvements to new player experience, uh, matchmaking, the whole ban system or report system, everything. Let's say there was this big package that dropped. Okay, I know I'm... I know I'm so this isn't uh, Dota 3 then? Well, if everything was changed a lot and they would change the look of something, that's the kind of way that you would draw attention to the game as like a relaunch, right? For example, if let's imagine they improved tons of quality of life things. You could either launch it as a big Dota 2 patch, like a huge one, 
Mm. Or you could be like, okay. this is Dota 3. This is the improved version. And that way you try to get players back or get new players in because you're like, we have made so big changes that we feel like it is worthy of a number so change. I mean, it's more of a marketing a stretch, thing then. You get, yeah, exactly. Okay. Like not actually just making the whole game again from scratch with new graphics or everything. I really don't think we need that. I think the game is, is beautiful. It's just like, I don't know if that's, is that considered like, is that weak? If you improve tons of things in your game and you consider it Dota 3 and then people are disappointed because it's not something insanely new, like how new does it need to be to be Dota 3? That's you a know tough what I mean? one. No, that's a, that's a really, I, I never really thought of it from that perspective. I mean, the issue, so if it's Dota 3, it's mm -hmm. on its own client. It's a different game. You can't call it Dota 3 if it just takes over what Dota 2 is, right? Why not? Because then it's not really Dota 3. Do you see battlefields that they come out with every fucking year? Just They cannibalize each other, sure, but they don't well, literally that's... take over the client. They're, they're separate I, games. I feel like it's different when it's a free-to-play game. Like Then the perspective is different, right? In Battlefield, they have to... Because they're pay-to-play games, so whenever they make a new one, it's to make profits so people buy the game, right? But if you have a free-to-play game hmm. and you upgrade it a lot, you could just say it's the... Like, Dota 2 is now gone, and now it's Dota 3. Isn't that what Fortnite did with Fortnite 2? It's just it's the same client, now it's just Fortnite 2. Or did they just call it that, and it was a patch? Isn't it just a season, seasonal change? It's a little different, because they actually made they, they kind of called it Fortnite 2, though, didn't they? I or is that what the you. community did? I could be saying stupid stuff here. I'm not sure. I mean, by your logic, then, Dota Reborn was Dota 3, in some respects. You could have just yeah, called it Dota 3. Yeah, to, to an extent, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Just, I, technically, they could have called that Dota 3. It changed the game a lot. No, I'm, I'm not saying it didn't. That was definitely and big. I'm yeah, just holding I, on to this old like yeah. mentality that it just needs to be a new game to be called a new game. Right. All I'm thinking is from the perspective of what helps the game the most. And I think something like that generates a lot of hype. You know what? So You come out with Dota 3, know. it's exactly the same as Dota 2, except <laughs> tournament organizers have exclusive rights to the tournament. <laughs> It's the only difference. That guys. would not go over well. <laughs> that would not Dota go over 3 well. introducing money for tournaments. Woo! Uh, uh. Yeah, I don't know. That That's an interesting topic, though. Uh, I'd have to think about that some more. I don't know. Man. I feel like there would be some I'm, negativity I, if it was called Dota 3 and it was literally took over Dota 2. Hmm. Hmm. Has that happened in other games? Well, Artifact could be the first, but I think that's, like I said, I think it's still separate clients. Right. Like where a new game gets released pay-to-play or free-to-play, whichever model, and it just replaces the old one. The old one just gets out-phased and becomes unplayable. Literally unplayable, right? Yeah. Not what that did I Overwatch do? Like, is Overwatch 2 the same client or a separate game, and will they still support the first Overwatch? So my, I think the time. reason that they got some flack is because it is a new game, but it's basically the same, just slight upgrades. Right. That's my understanding. Of course, I didn't look too deeply because I don't give a shit about Overwatch, as you guys know. <laughs> it's a garbage fucking game. I will have an opinion. All their players are going to Valorant. Know, but I hate it. I hate it. They're all going to play Valorant. Okay. Uh, in other news, the Unreal Engine 5 has been revealed via a beautiful YouTube video. Did you watch it, Sindarin? No. I haven't watched the video. What the fuck? What are you doing here? What, you're supposed to give your impressions on what it looks. Open the video. I'm just skim through it. it. I'm is skimming. it beautiful or not? It absolutely is, but I can't tell you. Wow, this would be absolutely impossible on Unreal Engine Four. I'm I just know. not enough of an expert on uh, graphics and programming to tell you whether this is the case no, or not. That, that's fair. Uh, that is on. It looks the, awesome, though. The way they displayed it, it was on a PS5, which I'm trying to remember the actual specs of a PS5, but it. It's pretty powerful by today's standards, but of course, by the time it comes out, it'll be outdated and obsolete, as are all consoles in nature. Um, but it looked really good. The lighting was very impressive. That was the thing that impressed me the most. Uh, okay, before and, you continue, mm -hmm. is it impressive because it's a good trailer, or is it big impressive because you can genuinely tell that this is very different from what we already had? I wouldn't say it's very different, but yeah, there's, there's certain levels of detail... Uh, the way I was that you feel like to, we're unobtainable. Like the textures for some of the rocks, right? 
mm-hmm. the way that they i'm gonna do a shitty job of explaining this um they had they had weird terms like nanites and shit like that i'm not gonna even pretend to know what they're talking about but okay. the textures were like 4k textures or something like that but scaled down to make it still look like 4k but you don't get the performance hit that's the impressive thing it's the fact that it looks right. so crisp but the performance is still good um so the reason we bring this up is because it's coming in 2021 and it could have huge ramifications on future and even present games i mean things like valorant uh fortnite they're all on the unreal engine i believe no apex is on source there, there's a lot of games on the unreal engine and in theory this could like if with source 2 for example right everybody in csgo is waiting for source 2 uh, dota's had it for quite a while <laughs> yeah. um it's kind of the same deal right it's the same kind of impact potentially but we'll have to see what it actually looks like in each respective game and like i don't know yeah. if fortnite even gives a shit about upgrading because i don't know how much is involved in actually going through that process um i don't know how much fortnite really as a game with how it runs and what resources it uses, I feel like there's just some games that inherently benefit way more from an engine upgrade than others, right? Fortnite is not if one of them. Yeah, Fortnite is one of them. I, I, I don't know. Like I, Again, I could just be totally wrong, but it it's doesn't cool. seem like a game that needs it. It looks much. cool. That's all that matters. Um, but still on the Unreal Engine topic, and this was the coolest thing that I read this week. Um, uh, who is this person that tweeted? Dana Cowley. She is a marketing manager at Epic Games. So they changed some of the wording on uh, their Unreal Engine license. So before... Actually, let me just read her tweet. She says, we want to make it even easier for independent game developers to succeed with Unreal. So now, instead of a 5% royalty after your game earns 3000 a quarter... So what that means is you license the Unreal Engine, you can make your own game with their tools, but you have to pay 5% royalty um after your game is big enough to make three thousand dollars per quarter right which is which, one thousand dollars a month right which is not very much for even like medium-sized mm-hmm. games um yeah but now they've changed it so to the fact that you don't have you don't owe them anything until your game earns one million dollars and it ends up being the same fee as it was before this is so fucking cool and uh this has huge ramifications going forward as well because now more people are going to be like these indie developers are going to be more inclined to go to something like the Unreal Engine because they will potentially get more money in the, or they'll be able to save more money up front. There's a lot of incentive to start using Unreal Engine, not Once just again, the fact that is, you have Unreal 5 coming out. Of the engine. This is something that I don't know big, I don't know how much this really matters. So correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's still 5%, right? So yes. I feel like if this is a deal breaker for your project, then you're on an insanely tight budget to begin with. If you're like, because this 5% royalty doesn't need to get paid after our game makes $12,000 a year until we make $1 million. This 5% cut is the deal breaker of whether I will use Unreal Engine or not. Does that sound likely to you? For people that try to I mean, make I think ends it's a meet really... and getting rent checks in, yes, I think it does make a big difference. I mean, I definitely think it's a really nice, uh, it's a really nice gesture and it's a good promotional move well, look by at it this way, Epic Cedric. to make. But Let's say like it doesn't just make... if you look at the bottom line of how much this really is, is it is it a very big deal? Look at it this way. Let's say it's not a big deal. Even though I, okay. I think it depends on their situation. Let's just say for mm-hmm. now it's not a big deal in terms of actual money. Just the fact that they come out with this is going to incentivize people to start using their engine. As oh, developers. for sure. That's, I, I, okay, so, so it's I genius guess... on more than one level, I think. Right. So my point was people that have already looked into using this and Mm -hmm. or maybe have used it in the past. I don't know if this is a deal breaker, but it's a really good promotional move. Right. It it makes it a topic. People are talking about Unreal Engine more and it's relatively. I I don't know how inexpensive this is for inexpensive it is for Epic to do. It might be profitable in the end because there's a higher chance that successful titles end up being on unreal engine so they do get paid more in the end because the games that make a lot of money end up on unreal um i I don't know if i'm being overly skeptical or cynical about this i I love that you're being skeptical for once it's great because um for once am i not skeptical on usually well i feel like i'm the skeptical one usually we switch roles a bit here 
the the only thing for me is like it's the number, right? If it was ten percent or fifteen percent, then all of a sudden, holy shit, this is a really big deal. It's like five percent is a twentieth of what your game earns up until the million, and it's not from the perspective that isn't this isn't money. This is not what I'm getting at. I'm not getting at oh, it's little, so it doesn't matter. It's more like the fact that this five percent change makes you choose specifically to use this engine over another you would have needed to consider the engines extremely close to begin with and how good they are for your game right. for this Which, to push you over the edge. That's my point. Like, I think, but isn't that the whole point in general is that maybe and like the source engine is very... Uh, I mean, maybe the engines are that close. As well. It's possible. Yeah. I, I'm not going to pretend to know the ins and outs of what the benefits are mm-hmm. from using me, each Same for me. I, this, I is don't just, know. this is just, just like icing. Yeah, right? Just looking if at the you, numbers. If yeah. you're leaning towards it, then this will give you extra incentive to go forward. Uh, last mm-hmm. topic of the day. Definitely uh, good though. Obviously, the live stream industry, they came out with a graphic um, of the growth that live streaming has had. Let me let's go over the numbers, Cinderin. So we're going to compare hours watched uh, between April of 2019 and April of 2020. Now, some of the growth I feel like is in part due to COVID-19. People are stuck at Mm -hmm. home watching more. So just keep that in mind. But still, Twitch. They have gone from 750 million hours watched to 1.4 billion. Their growth uh, is, their year over year growth is 98%. YouTube. This, okay, one second before yes. you do this. This is really selective because it's specifically April. Okay, like let's, okay. let's take it with a grain of salt. People Even are with a grain fucking of salt. AFK watching Valorant to get keys in this exact month that they're okay. comparing. That's f- okay. Like this, that is fair. This is not a fair comparison. I would love to see the comparison between January and January or the average sure. of the first four months. I think that's way more interesting. It's just, I think that this looks like something that people put together. This is why sometimes I just hate statistics because people just bend them like cherry crazy. Pick them? No, like, that's fine. Yeah, it's so cherry pick. This. I don't disagree. And I don't want to talk gaming down. Okay, like it's in my interest that this is growing, but come <laughs> on, like at least at least stay somewhat real with what's happening here. So like, we're not trying to pretend that these we didn't are... have a hundred percent fucking growth from last year. Okay, we did. Yes, there's no way. The reason I wanted to bring but... this up is for two things. Number one, it's interesting to talk about, but yeah, obviously. Uh, this is not as legit as it sounds, but let's continue with the numbers because then we'll get to point number two. <laughs> so we're going, we're going to get the laugh here. I, yes. I, I get where this is going. So okay. YouTube gaming was 279 million, is now 461 million. That's a growth of 65. percent That's without Valorant. That's just that one COVID-19 seems a lot more organic, and, I think, than the other. I'm, I don't know if organic is the right word. I think it's Facebook, because YouTube have acquired Facebook some gaming. Streamers, right? Sorry. Okay. Facebook gaming, eighty-six mm-hmm. million to two hundred and ninety-one million. That's two hundred and thirty-eight percent growth. That's in part due to all the sponsorship streamers that they've paid. God knows oh, how much shit. money. You okay there, Cinderin? Yeah, uh, I just banged my knee against the table. Good. That's a huge growth there. And then the final one, Cinderin, Mixer, Microsoft Mixer. This is within the same year of getting Shroud from getting Ninja and God knows who else. They went from 37 million hours watched to 37 million hours watched. <laughs> that is a, if you go to the specific number, it's a growth of 0.2%. How the fuck is that possible? <laughs> How is that possible? They did not gain I, any viewers. I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know. Like I've been on but Mixer it, a few times, and it's not like it's a bad experience. I just... I obviously prefer Twitch. Right. I don't know why they are failing so hard. I really don't. I don't know enough about well, it. But it's still fun. I, again, I, w- I would like to see the statistics not just from specifically April 2019 to specifically April 2020. Like maybe maybe the average growth is, you know, something to talk about. Like th- there could be many reasons why this month is not the best like, on Mixer. I'm sure when Shroud and Ninja joined for that month, they probably grew a lot. But then mm-hmm. how did they go under what... <laughs> I I have no idea what's going on I, I can't explain it to you. This is it's really weird. Very weird. Yeah. The uh, Twitch so. one is really easy to explain. Um, I think both YouTube and Facebook gaming probably benefit a lot from COVID. I think... Do, do you feel like it's a fair thing to say that they maybe benefit more than Twitch does? Because let's say COVID is rampant, right? And people are at home. 
a lot of people who maybe don't watch streams very much suddenly find the time for it. And maybe yeah. there's a higher chance that they go to Facebook or YouTube because the people that are already into it would watch Twitch more likely because yes. it's the... I agree. So I, I think they benefit more, YouTube and Facebook, from this than Twitch does. No, I Obviously, agree. all of them benefit, but M- I would... Mixer honestly, does not. these statistics are super interesting. I just want them to be more, you know. What, what can Mixer do to get the same kind of... So Twitch is its own thing. It's its own beast, right? Uh, they're owned yeah. by Amazon, but... I mean, there's some Twitch Prime stuff, but it's not like it's... Is it even on Amazon.com? I don't think so. YouTube Gaming, obviously, it's on YouTube. It's just a section mm-hmm. within it. Facebook Gaming, same thing for Facebook. Mixer, do you see where I'm going here? What, what does Microsoft yeah. so have you that think, would... So Mixer should start selling mixers for the kitchen, and then they should have a Mixer Gaming section. If it can get popular, why not? Anything's better than the 0.2% growth. Uh, I can increase this, our stream percentage higher than that just by taking a dump on this desk right now. So... Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of room to grow for Mixer. Uh, we'll see. I'm pretty sure can. that's against terms of service, by the way. Just saying. Uh, if I don't show my butt, it's possible we can get away with it. It could just be ice cream. You never know. Uh, <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a comment is that? It's the first thing that popped in my head. Okay, so finishing the episode, <laughs> uh, we have a. Actually, you can you can take this question since it is the Patreon mailbag section, my friend. Yep. So today we have another question from Nivnav. Nivnav is really contributing the questions that we pick a lot. Yes. Uh, a list maybe of it's your questions. Smurf, your Discord Smurf. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What do you think humanity will be able to achieve in the next 100 years? Time travel, flying cars, commercial trips to space, etc. How about we each make two Bold predictions of what happens in a hundred years. Bold, a hundred years. Bold predictions. Bold predictions. Yeah, and it could be anything, from turning shit years. into ice cream to flying cars. I mean, that's not bad. All right, a hundred years. We'll go back and forth with one each. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think. All right. First, I'm going to say I think within the next twenty to thirty years. This is not part of my thing, by the way, because we're going with 100. Next 20 to 30 years, we will be on Mars in some respect. Okay, We will visit Mars in person. So within the next 100, you would think that with the rate of development of... This is assuming we don't kill each other with nukes or COVID-20 or whatever the case may be. Um, I think we will inhabit another planet to the point of like terraforming type deal. Where we're actually changing the environment to okay. better fit our needs. A hundred years is a long ass time. Like what what happened in the last hundred years? Where well, that, were we see, in nineteen twenty? See, that's not fair though, because if I you know. look at the, no, the no, accelerated I, process you, of not, technology, of course. it amplifies with each hundred mm. years, each century. Yeah, a hundred years Absolutely. ago, what is it, nineteen twenty? That was the Great yeah. Depression era. Uh automobiles were somewhat new, I believe. When was the telephone? Like nineteen hundred, like eighteen ninety something? Not sure. Radio and TV. Radio was about that time, right? And then TV came in the became bigger at least in the 30s and 40s, was it? TV? Yeah. Yeah. I think we know what refri- we're talking when about. When is guys, the refrigerator the from actually? I don't know. I just getting- googled refrigerator. What was I expecting? <laughs> <laughs> Refrigerator, refrigerator invention. <laughs> I'm sure there was like some... 1930, 1834. What? 1834? Yeah. But it wasn't electrical, right? Or what? I guess not. I Electricity mean, this is like, it's was a question of definition. what year? Yeah, yeah. 18, oh. late 1800s? We're just going to make ourselves look stupid. I think we should not talk about this. <laughs> we're should. just going to show like how It's been how a long we time since know. we were taught this stuff. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. What I was your point? We had that whole fucking discussion. What happened the last hundred years? What's your point? Get no, to it. it. To have a, it was to kind of have a reference, whether for for better or worse. Of like, it's interesting, right, to think about. Like, if you it make is. predictions of what happens in a hundred years, the only thing you can compare it to is what happened in the prior hundred years. Not saying it is linear because it's not, but it's like a good like. Well, it's it, interesting. In to that think case, about you need to compare the last two hundred years, right? Yeah, to or the what? last, or the last fifty or twenty, like however you think. Sure. 
Um, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, oh, my next one's so stupid. <laughs> Let me think. I think the average lifetime will be over a hundred years. That's your bold prediction. A hundred. That's pretty bold if you look at history. Average. That is pretty damn bold. The average person lives over a hundred years. What is the average right now? Like seventy nine? No, not even close. You sure? Yeah. Seventy six. Seventy one. Seventy one. This is global yeah. though, right? Like, yeah. Can you take take a take like the U.S. for example? Let's let's get a. That's probably lower. <laughs> because of obesity and diabetes yeah. is it actually lower joking. there's no fucking I don't know. way there's see. no way that's uh, lower than the global this. rate come on it's still United a States. let's see what country. placement United States has it's 38th okay that's fair your what overall is, is 78.9 okay so that's just above global that's what I thought average the highest average is Japan mm. Where's Denmark? Please tell me we're not below the U.S. Okay, There's... we're not. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right above them, 37. Uh, nah, I mean, if 81. you look at the rate of the mortality rate in the last X amount 81. of years, it's just gone up dramatically, right? That's why I feel like 100 maybe isn't that bold for 100 years in the future. How, how okay, 100 years ago, 1920 life expectancy. Let's see. I'm going to say again, 50 I'm not something. Using this if that actually is the case, then maybe, yeah, maybe it's not even that bold. You just, you wouldn't expect something like life expectancy to follow a linear growth, though. Right? Well, I obviously got a big spike with, uh, with, damn, like, soap in 1920, and all that shit, in the US, the, the average, the average in 1920 is 54.1. God, God, I'm fucking good, man. Jesus in 1920. Christ. God, I sound like an idiot, but sometimes. When I look at the growth here, it's, it's not linear. It's definitely flattening overall. It's, yeah, but, I know. It is flattening. But but still. All right. Yeah. So you're saying 100 yeah. years Maybe life expectancy. We'll stick with it, though. In 100 yeah. years. Okay. Average. Average life expectancy, 100 years. All right. I can take a different Open. spin here, okay? At first, mm -hmm. I thought this was a stupid one, but I'm going to spin it a little bit to make it sound more interesting. So what I'm going to say is not going to sound that crazy, but I'm saying it's going to take 100 years to do this, which will sound crazier. Okay. Okay, I think it's going to take the better part. It could take, we round up in America. So let's just say 75 or more years to fix this problem. Internet lag Artifact? from one country to another. Oh. Being able to play on the same ping, I think it will take a v way longer than people think to fix that issue. Playing from Australia versus somebody in the US, whatever the fuck, it doesn't matter. Cross world mm -hmm. lag will still be a thing for the foreseeable future. How much do you know about this? Nothing. Okay. Absolutely I'm just like, nothing. I'm just thinking theoretically how quickly you can transmit information in general. Like even from a theoretical standpoint, how fast can you transfer information? Light well, the speed, speed of light is... I don't know how long but that can light take to carry data air. like that, in theory? I mean, isn't that what fiber is? To a degree? It's not actual light speed, but it uses lasers and... God, we're going to sound like goddamn idiots. <laughs> I'm pretty See, sure fiber is I light. don't make statements like that because then you just look really no, dumb when I, people I actually that's, know that's stuff about it. true to a it. degree. Um, fiber optic speed is pretty fucking fast, but it's not the speed of light. Well, some people are saying it's... Okay. I mean, th this is clearly not my, my strong suit, but I would be... I don't know. Okay. Do you think that would? I'm just. I, Are my you more first surprised was, that it takes it that possible? long, or that's even possible? Because there's arguments to be had that it's literally not possible to do that. I think a lot Are of they? the stuff that we think is impossible, I think will eventually, whether it's 100 years, 200, whatever, we'll find a way. Mm -hmm. I think everything is possible. Everything is possible. Just about everything. <laughs> That's a big. That is that okay, is a bold this? prediction. How about this? I know nothing about the subject, so people like uh, what, Einstein, you can't go faster than the speed of light. I mm -hmm. think eventually you that you will be able to. Yes, stuff like that. Okay. I think eventually we're gonna like we're not gonna look. We're gonna be fucking dead for a long period. So of time you think by the time that comes you do back. think eventually we can see the end of the universe? 
yeah, we can, we'll be able to see the marble that we came from, Cinderin. Uh, we can see the alien that's playing with the marble that is our entire universe. I don't know if you could ever escape the universe, though. But this is, this is turning into a great episode of we say really <laughs> fucking so stupid. Many, so many people that actually are into physics that just get insanely triggered. All right. What's your last <laughs> prediction before we oh, end this? Oh, I haven't even been thinking now because this was way too fun. No, it is fun to talk about even if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It we is. Have a, it is we should have somebody it that has true. this as an expertise of theirs on the podcast and tell us how stupid we are. Just analyze it. Fuck. What's a bold prediction I can come up with that I actually think is a possibility? That's left. You can do it. Do you think we'll it's have really hard cars? when you just get put on the spot like that? Do you think we we'll have teleportation? Like, Hundred years. I mean, f flying cars is an easy answer because I don't think that's that ridiculous to begin with. So mm -hmm. I don't. I don't even know if is that a bold prediction? Flying cars in a hundred years. I just watched Back would to the Future. They thought that by bold? now we'd have flying cars. Right. Uh, of course, the problem is but if given, something given the landscape now. Do you think that's a bold prediction? A hundred years. See, that's the thing. If you say fifty years, I'd say that's a bold prediction. Yes. Hundred years. Who the fuck yeah. knows? Everything's gonna look totally different. Uh, okay, is that your god awful prediction, Cinderin? Flying cars? I'd rather not make a prediction then. Just say teleportation just and be done with it. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> we no. will be able okay, here's a bold prediction. I'll make it one for okay. you. I think by okay. then, right. we will have merged with machines to a higher degree than you're expecting. We will be a hybrid of some kind. So humanity will have cyborg elements. Yes, I think the next evolutionary step years. is for us to meld with AI slash robots slash whatever the fuck you want to call it. So I think in a hundred years, everyone will do that. It will be. It'll be standard. Yeah, I think so. I don't. I don't think I that's. I think actually that's a that pretty bold, bold prediction. I kind of like that. I think okay. that's a bold prediction, actually. Okay, okay. I'll I'll take that. That's good. I mean, again, a hundred sure. years is actually a ridiculously long time. But if you're watching this a hundred years from now, let us know what you think of this podcast episode. Um, <laughs> Put it on our gravestone. Leave a review. And if you can, I really highly recommend you watch In Bruges because even though this is 100 years prior to you, <laughs> very good movie. Don't listen to this idiot. Sindarin, have you seen In Bruges after episode 53? Maybe in 100 years. Maybe in 100 years. <laughs> All right, guys. It. You have to wait for it. Just everyone stay alive until then. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for listening to this Oh, God. It actually hurts me how great. stupid we sounded this episode, but it's, it's entertaining. What did you hopefully. sound? I sounded very smart. No, today. I. It's faster than light, Cinder. It's a game, okay? It's possible. Hmm. Have a great night, day, afternoon, wherever the hell you are, guys. Until next week, I'm Sunspan. I'm going to walk my dog and it's sunny outside. Bye. Bye. We say things that don't mean anything, but thanks for listening.